You're not supposed to start things with an apology. I, I, I've been taught, but I realize in looking at the program, uh, Michigan Jewish Sports Foundation, that uh, I live in Michigan, I'm Jewish, I work in sports, and I believe I owe you an apology for not having been therefore more involved with the organization here before. Uh, when you have three of the four things, you ought to be more connected, and I should have been up to this point. As far as this award, um, I have had uh, immeasurable blessings in my life, more than any one person should have. And the thing that stays with me the most at this age uh, is something that I learned from an old professor of mine, whose name was Maury Schwartz, who I ended up writing a book called Tuesday with Maury about. Maury was a uh, connected with him. I have been very busy achieving all those things that you saw in that video and out there working and trying to gather in and gather in and take and take and take and take and build up and build up and get an impressive resume. <coughs> and Maury, meanwhile, had been a dear professor of mine who, while I was so busy taking, I forgot about him for 16 years and only discovered he was dying when I happened to see him on television one night talking about what it was like to die. I went and saw him in the final months of his life. He was racked with this disease. He couldn't move. He needed to carry him from place to place. He needed to turn his head just to have him look at you. He needed to wipe his rear end when he went to the bathroom. And yet he never complained. He never bemoaned his fate. And when I would go visit him, other people would sometimes come in as well. And I would watch as they built themselves up to go talk to him. Because it's very hard for some people talk to a dying person, so they would always have this strategy. They would say, I'm going to tell them jokes, I'm going to show them pictures, I'm going to be upbeat, 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 and then they'd go into the room, the door would close, and they would come out an hour later in tears. But they would be crying about their divorce, or their job, or their worries, or their woes, and they said, you know, I went in to try to cheer him up, and I started telling some things, and then after a couple of minutes, he started asking me questions about me, and I told him, and he asked me more, and I told him more, next thing I know, I was telling him everything, and next thing I know, I was crying. I went in to try to cheer him up, but he ended up cheering me up. And I watched this happen so many times, that finally I went into Maury and I said, I don't get it. If ever anyone has finally earned the right to say, let's not talk about your problems, let's talk about my problems. It would be you. If anyone had ever earned the right to say you think you got it bad, look at me. I can't move. I need someone to blow my nose, wipe the tears from my eyes, carry me to the bed. You've earned the mother load of sympathy, I said. Why don't you take advantage of it? And he looked at me as if I had just stepped out of a spaceship and he said, Mitch, why would I ever take like that? Taking just makes me feel more like I'm dying. Giving makes me feel like I'm living. Giving makes me feel like I'm living. It's a profound sentence. It also rhymes, so it's easy to remember. <laughs> Giving makes you feel like you're living. I hope with whatever time I have left on this earth, I am better known from here on out for what I give and what I take. So I appreciate this award. What I most appreciate is what this organization does and that I see that you do. And the people like Mr. Bernstein and people like Joe Bale who have given and continue to give and your organization that gives to charity. That is how you live on. It isn't by the accomplishments that you have done. It's by all the lives you touch by what you do that. I hope to try to honor that and honor this award in the years that I have left. Thanks very, very much.